Hey guys. I think. I think Kai. I think I'm on. As usual, my technical incompetence has made me late. Something wrong with my computer. It's being very sluggish. I will have to make do. Caitlin Fogelman over on YouTube says hello. In return, I say hello. How you doing? Welcome. You do not sound familiar to me, so I will show you what I'm working on in total, which is this, uh, this little gremlin looking dude and he is uh, from a uh, trilogy of novels that uh, me and my writing partner have been working on and uh, I wanted to do a sculpture and then print that sculpture out in 3d and then photograph that for the cover it's a pretty pretty roundabout way to make a book cover yes some might deem that a ridiculous process. If I was not technically incompetent, I would be able to make a, uh, a CG render look as good or better than that whole process. But, but uh, it's still worth it to me because um, then I get uh, sculptures because I'm going to be molding and casting the sculpture as well so I can hopefully sell products you know when he becomes insanely popular and everyone wants a, uh, a sculpture of Scola okay. well Catherine says it's a brilliant idea and he's super adorbs Excellent. Can I sign you up for one million uh, sculptures? Mm -hmm. So he's got these stubby little, um, he's got his hands are, as you can see, um, somewhat symmetrical, and he's got these web extrusion uh, sphincters on the palm. So I've been trying to figure out how to do uh, the the muscles that would need to contract and uh, the opposite of contract, um, as well as fun as be a functional palm because he needs to be able to reach his his three thumbs and three fingers together I'm doing a bit of just kind of exploring I don't I don't think the palm itself needs to be able to, to um, pinch as much as a humans does because he's got um, three uh, opposable thumbs um, they can be very dexterous without having to do as much uh, palm manipulation as we do. Alright, 
right now I'm still at that pretty vague gesturing stage. Eventually I'll get to the point where I'm doing all these scales and folds and wrinkles and stuff. Dottie, welcome. Hello. Catherine says, so are these his hands or feet or both? Uh, they're technically hands, but they're, they're so long that they can be used kind of like uh, crutches. You can, you can, you know, kind of speed walk with them because he's got these four super stubby little legs so in general when they walk they, they just kind of the, the they float around I'm imagining them like Pac-Man ghosts you just kind of see them bobbing around um, but when they need to really really book it yeah they'll use their kind of their hands kind of like gorilla like gorillas do Dottie says, so where do I go on Twitch to find you? Great question. You're actually you're actually gonna make the brave leap. I applaud you and I and I uh, I'm extremely grateful because you are one of my most uh, loyal and valuable compatriots on this journey. Uh, go go to Josh underscore Foreman. There's a search box at the top. And actually, when you do a search, they have this really weird thing. I'm going to do it real quick. Where it'll give you the results, and you have to make sure that you're picking artists or, um, let's see, because there's games, but, oh, channels. you got to make sure that you're, you're searching under channels for Josh Foreman. Um, or you could click this link that I could just, I could just put here. How's that for easy? Aletha coming over to the Twitch side says it's not so bad on the Twitch side. Come hang out with me. I'm hanging out, but on the couch side. Yeah, Heather's hanging out. Not on the Twitch or the YouTube side. She gets she gets the full live show, twenty four seven. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now that's a value for you. So these guys are aliens. Uh, however, there's something about anatomy that I think is universal, which is which is. Um, well, I mean, physics is is pretty universal, but so is so, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Mechanics? Gravity. Gra well, not gravity, because gravity's <laughs> close. Although, well, yes, gravity does exist, um, but it is different in different places. Um, machinery. Uh, okay, so there are different. I can't believe I'm blanking on this word. Levers and pulleys and counterweights. Wait, these are examples. I, I, is it mechanics? Is it machine? Whatever those things, okay? So if you have a body, if you have a body that uh, is flexible and moves, you're going, some people do, some people don't. Uh, <laughs> All right, Dottie, thanks so much for giving it a shot. Um, if you have those things, you're gonna you're going to find the same things. Pivot points, fulcrums. Uh, okay, so tendons. That I wow, what a what a terrible, terrible. Uh, 
I can't word right now. Anyway, this is why when you're designing uh, non-magical fantasy creatures or sci-fi creatures, uh, it's super good to look at reference. Even when you're doing magical creatures, it's still good to look at reference. The, the human brain responds best to what it knows and understands. Like, unless you're doing, you know, a, a vaporous fog. And even then, uh, if you're making a vaporous fog creature, look at a reference of vaporous fro fog, for crying out loud. Don't just make blobs. Uh, so, yeah, I've been... Over the uh, 20 previous 22 parts of this series, I've been pulling up a lot of reference. And that is a good reminder to pull up some reference now, because I'm working on... What is essentially kind of a reptile's uh, feet. Oh, Letha says hi, Heather. Hello. Uh, where do I where do I have that? I have. Here we go. No, that's not what I want. I know I have reference somewhere. A shortcut to my reference. I'm at that point where I've made so much, so many shortcuts that they're they're no longer shortcuts. That's animals. Da, 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 da. No, not horses. Not horses. Very parky dog out there. <sighs> so, um, these are incredible scales. Gosh, I love these scales. Um, I don't know. I mean, my toes are much more regular than that. Although they don't need to be. It's good to sometimes ch change direction, um, you know. Can you see reference that's particularly inspiring? Um, this is uh, Jonas the lizard, by the way. Uh, I thought I had... thought I had a folder that was specifically a bunch of feet, but now I'm doubting myself. Okay, is there a way to make it not be either tiny or huge to just pop up at a nice regular size that'd be amazing what does this do that makes a full screen i don't want that <sighs> sorry guys oh, my oh so if i accidentally touch the top of the screen or come within like 10 pixels of it it auto pops it up there um uh, anyway yeah, I'm, I'm not getting a lot from these. Let me... Which is super obnoxious because I know I've gone through this process before, before, before. Okay. Lizard foot. Okay. Wow, look at that one. That's super, super cool. Uh, I did want to give him some interesting nails. I don't want just this like super generic, you know, just curve thing. Oh, high five. This is great. Yeah, I might do something along these lines. Either way, one thing I'm seeing is that you don't see a lot of the articulation underneath the the tendons and the and the knuckles this guy you can see him a little bit more but they seem to be like just really noodly which <laughs> which in general you want to avoid uh when you're doing art but i mean if the actual creature itself evokes noodliness um 
Although, again, I'm not trying to make this literally a lizard. This is, this is an alien that has uh, scale-like skin. That's pretty alien looking. Uh, Dottie B, you successfully made it to the other side. Congratulations. These are pretty great. I wonder if I might want to. If I might want to. I'm going to experiment with this real quick, because those, they are they are very like delightfully alien looking and, at the same time, um, more unique than what I've got going on right now. Not that every part of uh, design needs to be unique. In fact, you kind of want to ration your uniqueness. Otherwise, you end up with something so alien that it's like unrecognizable uh however i think in the economy of weirdness uh the sh the fact that these are fingers coming off a hand coming off an arm you already kind of have a, a logic flow in your head when you're observing it so i think you can get away with um it, it doesn't cost many unique tokens, uniqueness tokens. Alienation bucks. I gotta come up with a term for this. Whatever it is that makes it so that when you see a design, oops, this is clearly not the right brush. Let's not put buckles on him. That's a little too unique. I don't know how I accidentally selected that. Um, whatever it is that makes it so when you look at a design, like some creatures you look at and you understand and that's the intention. Other ones are purposefully off-putting and hard, difficult to understand. Um, and hopefully that's purposeful. Um, I know in some, in some uh, especially movies, I feel like they were doing it accidentally. I think the consummate perfect example of creature design is still Giger's Alien, where it's meant to evoke all sorts of just like wrongness and misinterpretations and not, as an audience, you're supposed to not get it. And it's a gradual revelation of what this creature is, what it does, how it works, what the parts of it are. Um, but then there's other movies like, um, uh, one of them that, that comes to mind, uh, it's, I believe it's a Neville Page design in the first Star Trek movie where, I think it's the first one, where, um, sorry, the first new version, the first J.J. Abrams one. Um, I want to say Spock is stuck on an, on an ice planet and he's running away from this bright red creature that just has, a, like, I don't know, 20 crab claws and its face is just a big open flower of petals and it's got jaws and teeth and tongues it just it's just a mess like not a fan not a fan which is which is by no means to say that Neville Page is a bad artist or whatever it's there's so many things that go into creature design especially when you're doing it at a you know on a production like that you've got the director input and the producer input and the CG technicians input and um, I know from my friends who work on Hollywood uh, creature design that you know their vision of what they think it should be is never what ends up <laughs> on the screen. Ivan came over on the YouTubes. Hello, Ivan. Ivan, uh, I'm just gonna let you know that both Aletha and Dottie have now made it successfully to the other side. So. If you want to give it a shot over to the dark side of Twitch, uh, I'd, be, I'd be very appreciative. I'm streaming there right now. If you don't have an account, you could literally make one and pop over. If Dottie could do it, anyone can do it. Because yeah, the live streams on YouTube are not going to be lasting much longer. Yeah, I really like, I really like this gecko pad I've got going on here. 
I think that's very helpful. For the record, I've said this many times, but of course not everyone watches every stream. Um, when I stop live streaming to YouTube, uh, A, the reason is because according to Twitch contracts, if you, if you have a, um, if you become a associate or whatever it's called, um, you, can't, you cannot stream to two places at once or any other place besides Twitch. You can't live stream, but I can be recording these and then uploading them to YouTube later. So it's not like the content will no longer be on YouTube. It just uh, won't be live content anymore. Which, you know, hey, YouTube executives, whoever owns YouTube, um, Jeff Bezos, I'm sure you're watching. Um, hey, make, give YouTube the same feature that Twitch does where people can subscribe to you for a monthly fee and support you that way. And then I won't have to uh, do this drastic action that's going to lose Facebook uh, billions of dollars a minute. I assume that's what I'm making for them. This is not a healthy claw. I'm gonna have to inflate it a little bit. Oh, you'll give it a shot? Thank you, Ivan. I appreciate that. Uh, Letha says, the only downside is that the smileys are lame. Hey, that's not true. Um, there are incredible smileys on Twitch. I think you just need to know how to do them right, and I don't know how to do them right. Um, I don't know if it's a per channel thing. I know you can get smileys, from people's channels and then use them on other people's channels. And so there's like a billion trillion of them. Uh, this is this is one of those things I still have to still have to look into. Um, once I'm not dual streaming, I'll have that cognitive overhead available to be able to look into that sort of thing and really um, really tweak the Twitch channel so that it uh, has all the fun features that other twitchy types have. Dottie says, will switching over affect how the Patreon works? Uh, no, not at all. Patreon is a completely separate component. Um, what, what Twitch lets you do is um, have a subscription, a paid subscription where you can subscribe to a channel and that gives them however much you, you so it, it's like Patreon in that it's a, it's a monthly commitment. Of course you can stop at any time, um, but it is uh, just goes through Twitch. So for people who don't wanna sign up on Patreon, there's a lot of people who are on Twitch already and are already subscribed to people. Um, and a really cool thing is that Twitch, sorry, um, Amazon Prime, anyone who has Amazon Prime has a f uh, subscription for free that they can give to anyone they want on Twitch. So um, if you happen to have Amazon Prime, don't do it yet because I haven't done the thing. But once I do do the thing, you can subscribe to me and Amazon will be paying me a monthly fee instead of you. How awesome is that? I'm gonna need this right now. <laughs> it, does, it does seem pretty, pretty convoluted. Really this is why I just like join you on the couch way easier than Yeah, than yeah. Or you could just come to my house and sit on my couch with me and Heather and watch me over my shoulder. <laughs> oh, that like what I'm doing? Yeah, just, just judging you. Get off my back! <laughs> Oh, I can stream how I want. <laughs> You're always like, work faster, work harder. Oh. 
Be funnier. You're not my mom. You're not my back. What is next weekend? Hey guys, uh, big announcement. Rose Foreman's gonna be on the couch with me next week. We get another uh, author, author stream. Yay! Where we get to talk yet again about how the novel's not out yet. Um, <laughs> help me brainstorm stuff to talk about that is uh, book related, you guys. Like, how do you how do you talk about and promote a book that's not out yet? that you're working on art for on the stream besides saying hey I'm working on this art for this book you know your dad and I <clears throat> talked about this on the phone the other day yeah and I'm like how long are we gonna wait for this book out he's like I don't know he's like that's what I'm like the same way just like he says like try to talk them into like keep saying do it now do it now <laughs> He's like, I mean, that way I'm not the only, he's like, it's nice to know I'm not the only one saying this. <laughs> I'm like, no kidding, we're going to be dead before. I am working on it every single day. Well, I might be dead. <laughs> it conflicted a memory of one of the dreams I posted about that I had. Yeah. <laughs> so, he's dying. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so weird, it was hilarious. Yes. If anyone's interested, it's just sort of things that I will share with you for Oh, I'm sure they want to hear your story. First, I'm going to read uh, Aletha on Twitch's comment. She says, hmm, yeah, right now there are only the alien smileys and a bunch of disturbing people faces. <laughs> yeah. And then it says, I'll watch over your shoulder in July. Excellent. And yay. give you bunny ears. And then yay, Rose Foreman. Yay. All right, everyone. Gather around your monitor, the warm glow of your monitor, and prepare to listen to an amazing story about Heather's dream about dying. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, perfect music just started. Sorry, I was just also. editing a... Okay, honey. This is, this is okay. a perfect time. Start your dream. So this happens May 20th. Okay. 2014. So a few years ago. Okay. And by the way, I work at Starbucks at this is great. Um, so I had a dream last night where my doctors ran some weird test and told me I was dying, even though I felt fine. And the people kept coming to me to say goodbye, even though I still had a while to live. There were a bunch of strangers coming to see me and they were all gathered around my room and started singing songs to me. And then I think about Is it a song you knew or just I don't think some so. random song? Okay. Yeah. Um, I had caught some rare virus that attached with pneumonia at some point between the years of 1994 and 2000. <laughs> so, that, that's what the doctor told you? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, even though I was dying in my dream, I still went to Starbucks to work a shift and this super annoying customer wanted cereal and they wanted it in a dirty cup with a gallon of caramel salt on it. Wait, they specified they wanted it in a dirty yes. cup? <laughs> Honey, I'm writing the dream. That's now. amazing. She kept yelling at me that the cup wasn't dirty enough, and it was doing it all wrong. And then she got mad because I had to charge her for caramel sauce. And she was a co-worker's friend. <laughs> my, my old co-worker, Kat. And I, I, like this and I was like, Kat, don't bring your weird, annoying friends into my Starbucks dreams. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That's it. That's it. Okay. That was a dream. C customer demanding. I have lots of weird dreams, so I've been trying to. Uh... The, the weirdest one I had recently was um, I was at work and it was a supervisor. Someone was saying I needed to give a presentation about the, the software I used, but I couldn't use words. I had to do all interpretive dance. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like acting out like oh how you gosh. might interpretive dance a, an interface on a computer. That would be my yeah. best day ever. <laughs> 45 Evo says, yo, yo. And then again said, hello. All right, is that Ivan? Or are you Ivan? For 45 Evo? Did you do it? Did you successfully make the transition? Are you a superhuman? Yes. Excellent. I think I, I, I think I really like 
these kind of knobby knuckles still as a as an offset they make the they make the silhouette really interesting between the big patty uh, finger pads and the, uh, the top of the hand so they're not just noodly marshmallows like most lizards actually have did you know uh, that um, reptile fingers uh, taste like marshmallow Next, next time you see one, just just pull some off, eat them. They're delicious. Delicious. Yeah. Uh, also, my real name is Ivo. Is it Ivo or Evo? And by real, do you mean like that's what it sounds like in your language, or that's what how it is actually spelled with? Well, because there's there's that there's acrylic. Um, which I'm sure I'm not pronouncing correctly. Never mind. I'm going to stop asking questions and just let you answer. Just answer Ivo or Evo. Hard I or hard E sound. I doubt it's a soft I sound. It's not Ivo. I'm almost sure. Oh yeah, I really like what, what this is doing. This little, this little extra bit of interest. Stevie on YouTube. Hello Stevie. Welcome, welcome. Today is my big pledge drive of people um, switching from YouTube to Twitch. If you want to participate, you are welcome to do so. By going there, uh, because the the word on the street is that I'm no longer going to be doing uh, live YouTube streams. You will still get a, a recording of the stream on YouTube, but I can't do it live anymore because of contractual reasons with uh, with Twitch. If I wanna, if I want to be successful on Twitch, I cannot also do YouTube. Which stinks, because I like talking to you guys on YouTube. But I think it will be a brave new, even more funner world over on Twitch. There's so many more options. Eventually I'll get cool smiley faces over there. Way cooler than YouTube's. I think once I become a... Boop, 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 boop. What is it called? Affiliate? Yes, an affiliate on Twitch. Uh, the first thing I get to do is make my own little emoticon thing that people can use. And I'm thinking uh, it should probably be it should probably be Scola's happy face here. Don't you think that'd be a great a great smiley? Ivo says hard I sound, and yes, that's how it's spelled. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I thought it might be like a lot of people's channels, their their smileys are their faces, like like you were saying, Aletha, there's a lot of faces of just like who is this? Just some guy. And so I thought it might be funny to have my face, but then it just occurred to me now it'd be cooler to have my art. I mean People, most most Twitch streamers are not artists. They're mostly like game personalities. Like they play games, and people watch because they like watching people that they're familiar with and like uh, playing games. Apparently, um, but I have a different focus, so I should probably make that reflected in my smileys.
Who needs yet another mysterious head floating around the Twitch, the tri Twitchiverse? Now I'm trying to think, is there a good way to pull this bifurcation of the uh, digits into the palm? I mean, I've got these tendons that are essentially, you know, the, the tendons would wrap through here and then out going up the wrist that's how that's how fingers work in most mammals they don't actually have any significant muscles in their actual hand so all those like bumps and stuff you see are tendons or bones mostly tendons um, so this guy here would actually probably not be the finger tendon. It would just be for the webbing sphincter. In which case, aligning them with the fingers is probably not what I want to do. Clay brush is pretty good for just kind of filling in and flattening out. So, I could do more of these lines, although, you know, the more you do, the more it looks like a cat's butthole, and I don't think that's necessarily what I want to evoke here. Yeah, not super happy with that, but having fewer of them kind of helps avoid that. I wonder if it's tricky. Uh, orifices on anything are tricky. So could do it. <laughs> it gets super disturbing if you do something like mouth-like, right? Um. But I'm just going to try a bunch of random things and see what I like best. Uh, that could be interesting, actually, having kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, protruding ridge around it, that, and then that ridge is being pulled by tendons, that might help avoid the bunghole situation. Thanks Shane, it is looking good, but that's just because you like buttholes um what if, what if it was like star shaped oh. 
I see a quick question. Yeah. Can you see circles where I patched on the grass? Uh, no, but the eyes look super creepy on that kid. Well. Looks like a zombie. It, the sun wasn't shining on it. <laughs> I don't really know what to do with it. Uh, let's see. Ivo on Twitch wants me to tell him the best joke that I know. Oh boy. Best one I know. That's hard. All of my jokes are almost all um, contextual. Like, it's only funny if you're there and it's riffing off of something that uh, someone has said or something we see, that sort of thing. I'm not much of one for saying a formal, you know, set up uh, middle punchline type thing. Either that or just being really uh, absurdist or abstract. Yeah. Oh, hey. Nightbot hasn't come on and done anything, has it? Wonder why. Hey, Nightbot. Look what Nightbot's telling me, Aletha. Huh? Top chatter. Congratulations. Uh, but it doesn't seem to actually be doing anything. It's supposed to be popping on and being like, here's links to Josh's website. Do do do. Okay, so here we go. The Ask Dr. Know-It-All articles. Here's my best attempt at jokes. So if you go to my website, uh, you can learn how to grow a bonsai tree or how to train a snake. And as you can see, they're illustrated. Uh, they have... Uh, beautiful lists and so there you go that's if you want Josh Foreman jokes that's where you get them breath of life art dot com and then search for ask dr. know-it-all so having this sort of Skin folds and flaps coming up out of here. I feel helps to get it away from that just round orifice and all the other associations that come with it. So I'm gonna keep leaning into that and see where that takes me. I wonder, actually, I'll look this up real quick. Let's see what a um, spider spinnerets look like. Do they have a microscopic close-up? Through a microscope. Here we go. Good stuff. Hmm. Wow. It's so tiny they can't focus on the whole thing at once. Huh. So it looks like it's actually got... Looks like four little nubbins that, you know, do this to get the web hold out and then on those hair 
colors really obscure it too. It's hard to. Is it better because you can see now her eyes? Like, totally looks her like her a eyes. zombie picture. That's, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> I don't think you can. Well, with it, I mean, you could with Photoshop, but I don't think there's a. Well, what would you do? Add white? Yeah. You can here, but I don't know if I could. I need to connect it. Well, that's at least interesting that it's that's got like a five-sided thing. Yes, much better. <laughs> I think the fact that the mouth is so open. Here, let me show people. Now this that's a the zombie. There's a beautiful picture of Heather's uh, friend's kids that she's working on. Isn't, isn't that great? The sun wasn't in the eyes. <laughs> okay, so let me try that. What if I put little, little nubbins? Finger nubbins. Uh, AJ Bucky says, in full elven stream, an automated uh, got me for talking about riding a horse. What? Like, it punished you? Flag your comment for the word ride. Wow, that's... Now you can see your eyes. <laughs> that's some extreme moderation there. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, yeah, this definitely helped pull it away from just being a gross orifice. Thanks, nature. Thanks, research. See how researching is good. It makes you make fewer buttholes. Oh, the auto mod got you again. I want held a message for a reason. Oh, because you had ride her, referring to riding your horse. <laughs> huh. Uh, I guess you just need to call your horse a an it. Had fun riding it. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if that was out too. I think I want to, in general, pull... The Palm in more. I'm gonna use the move tool, make it really, really big. Probably too much. I need to mask off the surrounding area. I know there are um, specific phrases you can put in uh, to the filter or whatever to allow or disallow, so I'm sure I can make it on my stream so that you can, you can say that you ride your horse with safety and impunity. Oh, 
Ivo says, Oh, Josh, I might have confused you for the pronunciation of my name. You are saying it with a hard I, right? Then trying to say it with a soft I. I have a bit of a hard time telling which sounds are hard in Bulgarian and in English. Uh, let's see. Right, so a hard I is when I say I am Josh. That's a hard I sound. So if I am using a hard I for Ivo, I'm saying Ivo. If I'm softening it a bit, it sounds more like the letter E, Evo, and like the word Eve. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I'm just going to say it a different way each time. That way I'll never be right and I'll never be wrong. Or I'll always be wrong. Okay, I think... Oh, this is Dynamite. Three Dynamite ship. Yes. Sigrid popping over on the YouTube. Hi, Sigrid. Welcome. I will encourage you to do as many have done today so far. And if you have a Twitch account, go follow me on, watch this uh, stream live on Twitch right now, because I'm uh, not going to be streaming on YouTube much longer. I'm still gonna be uploading videos of my streams onto YouTube, but I can't do the live thing anymore. Okay. I don't think this is too off-putting now. It's less off-putting than it was, I think. I think. Dottie on Twitch says, so if your name, uh, so your name sounds like a Evo? And 45, Evo says, yes, it does. All right, I'm going to say Evo, like evolution. Even though that's not how we say evolution in the U.S. We should. Yeah, we should. Evolution. Evo. Sigrid said, trying to make Twitch my work. No luck yet. Um, did you accidentally put the word my in there? Or are you meaning that you're trying to make a living by Twitch streaming? I do not know. But either way, it's good effort. A for effort. Deadpool would say, maximum effort. It was good, by the way. He's so good. If you guys like Deadpool 1, you'll probably like Deadpool 2. All right, all right. So now we've got this general flow going. Oh, to make my Twitch work. Can't log on. Ah, oh, boo. So you have an account, but it's not. It's not letting you. You've got to reset your password or something dumb like that. It's so obnoxious. I can't wait till there's just some universal, like, this is me thing. And everywhere everyone everywhere just uses that thing yeah 
I still feel like I want a little bit of a indication of the um, the tendon because it, you've got a tendon on the top and the bottom of your finger so you can pull it up and put it down um, and so the, the one for pulling it in I believe is on the bottom and it goes it routes through your through your wrist all the way until you start getting some actual like muscle mass up here that does the actual pulling process everything all through here is it's pretty much just threaded through bone and tendon and stuff um, so I was saying earlier it would be going through this way like whoop, threaded through there Clark Cable over on Twitch says, interesting custom layout. Are you on a Cintiq? No, I'm just using a Intuos. That one. Just old leftovers that I get from friends who are upgrading or work when they're throwing stuff away or whatever. I can't, I can't remember where I get any of my tablets I don't think I've ever actually just like straight up bought one since the very first one I got in the in like 1996 or something and it was ridiculous amounts of money uh, I they offer to let me use a, a, a Cintiq at work but I the the like minute amount of lag between when you move your pin and the actual effect happening like you know a millisecond later or whatever it actually makes my stomach cramp up like i i feel it viscerally and physically for some reason it's really obnoxious Yeah, I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could use a Cintiq. I'm still waiting for them to get that millisecond lag taken care of. I don't. I don't know what needs to happen. <laughs> if if it's just a processing power thing or what, but. Ugh. Sigrid on YouTube says yes, hate it. I'm trying with my husband's account. All right. This is this is definitely making a very a very unique palm. I'm uh, pretty happy with the direction it's going. It's very alien, but I think by the time it's all done, it's going to look like a functioning piece of hardware. Yeah, the, the way this particular layout came about was mostly just um, I have a co-worker who does a lot of sculpting for uh, Hollywood as well as, you know, the games we work on. But um, it, he just had a template that he gave me and then I kind of must mucked muxed with it <laughs> messed around with it whatever 
um, because a lot of the stuff he does I'm not really proficient at, so I'm not ever doing it. And so it's kind of halfway between a like real professionals and just like what me as an intermediate understands and can do. Trying to find um, where to put kind of the, you know, the pillowy skin that you get when your hand creases up. You get these funny little bulges and, and wrinkles and stuff in those kind of areas. Um, you know, whenever, whenever skin has to do a lot of compression, it's going to tend to do that. Um, and but since the anatomy is is obviously so different from a human hand I can't really uh, use the patterns that are on a human hand but so I need to like um, reverse engineer how those come about on a human hand so that they look right on this uh, on this alien frame so mostly just kind of exploring, and, which means just kind of putting it in random places, you know, and then I kind of smooth it down if it doesn't, if it doesn't quite look right. And a lot of it has to do with how they interact too. So it's a line might look great in one place for a while, but then by the time you put some other lines in, uh, it's it's not so great. So I'm kind of kind of putting them in pretty lightly and then I'll just double down on the ones that really um, that are really looking right and feeling right uh, Lee Lu La Games is raiding with a party of four. Oh my gosh hold on to your butts we are here to raid I don't even know what that means um, I think it's a good thing Bjorn Hey, you Bjorn. Are you are you leading this raid? I don't understand what's happening, but I I appreciate it. Uh, I always appreciate whenever Bjorn comes around. He's awesome. You guys should check out Bjorn uh, Workshops channel. Uh, those of you who have recently tempted over to the dark side of Twitch, uh, he does incredible leather work and makes fantasy armor that it actually works. It's really mind blowing. Uh, Bjorn uh, Lilula Games says hello. Hi, hi, Lil L. Hi, L. <laughs> uh, Bjorn says we uh, means we are coming to hang out after Lilu finishing her stream. Great, that's awesome. Appreciate that. You guys want to see what I'm working on? I'm working on this cute little booger. His name is Skola. And uh, no, he's not a gremlin, but he does uh, certainly have similarities to a gremlin. But I'm making him for a book cover for a, a book series that I'm working on. I'm going to be printing him out in 3D, probably about this big-ish. And then um, painting, him, painting him, photographing him, and that's going to be the book cover. <laughs> Uh, Lilu says it's cute, but his hands are kind of creepy. Yes, yes they are. He's uh, he's definitely straddling that line between creepy cute and depending on what parts you're looking at and if they're coming right at you, uh, they may be more or less uh, disturbing. Bjorn says, how it goes? Sculpting and looking badass. Thank you, thank you. Uh, things are going pretty well. Slower than I'd like. Uh, this book has got to be out this year. And I still, I've made probably hundreds of illustrations for it at this point. And still, well, it's a trilogy is the problem. Um, initially, we were just going to launch the first book in the trilogy. 
and then after some research and self-publishing that's just kind of a bad idea if you don't have follow-up books coming soon and, and you're not a known author um, it's it's not a good idea to leave the world hanging so we decided we've got to get the whole trilogy done before we before we launch any of them so yeah I'm doing three books worth of illustrations and covers and etc cetera, etc cetera. but they are going to be lavishly illustrated and beautiful and hopefully that will set it apart and make people uh, talk about it word of mouth yo uh, Lilu says, did you write the book or co-write? Uh, I am co-author. Uh, I've been developing this this world for 15, 20 years-ish. And then uh, my co-author, who also just happens to be the woman who gave birth to me, um, she's actually a professional sci-fi writer. Like, she's sold books and had them published through traditional means. And uh, she really liked my world and started writing in it and what 10 12 years later we've got 10 novels now set <laughs> in this world and uh so yeah i'm really excited to actually finally get this thing out if you guys tune in next weekend um i'm going to have her on as a guest she lives in vancouver washington which is about two and a half or three hours from me so she visits every every couple of months I'd say and we try to try to get her on the stream for that so I encourage everyone to come check that out still creepy here let me see it I want to show people no. <laughs> it's awesome no. so this is this is a <laughs> I can't. Picture of a cute kid. That, yeah, because it's too dark now, the people. Just the open mouth and the eyes just totally make it look like a horror movie poster. It's great. <laughs> She's been trying to edit this thing for an hour, trying to figure out how to make the kid not look like a terrifying uh, zombie. Like from far away? It's so wrong? Here. I'll get, let's just get a second opinion. Okay, what do you guys think? From this, when you can see the whole picture, let me get it so the reflections are on there. Does, does it still look like a horror movie or is, is it just me? Is it just me? I don't know. I could try to freehand draw. I mean, if you send it to me, I can just throw it in Photoshop and I can make eyeballs that well, look like real eyes. <laughs> AJ Baki says, kids are just terrifying. All five of my nieces slash nephews were over this morning and I feel like I barely survived an apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Lilu Game says, hey, I'm an author too. Yay! Uh, Lilu self-publishes all of her stuff. That's awesome. Hey, we need to, uh, I need to follow you and see what you're doing. I wonder if I, how do you do that on Twitch? I'm... I'm new to Twitch, so I'm not good. Let's see, I'm gonna add you as a friend. Okay. And then I'll be able to follow your channel later. Oh, and now this is blocking all my other stuff. I don't know how to get rid of it. Oh, there's an X, okay. <laughs> yeah, Bjorn says, looks like a demon child, and uh, looks, uh, far away looks way better though. So yeah, maybe the context is what it needed. Uh, Lilu Game says, are the eyes black? Because black-eyed kids are evil. No, it's just the way the lighting was was hitting. Like, all you can see is the pupil and shadow. So it, so it just looks solid black. And they then with the wide-open no, mouth, that's like... you not see the pupil. That's the whole point. Her whole eyes were dark. That's what I mean. I mean, all you it see is the dark. just her pupil. Sorry. Okay, not just pupil. That's okay. the problem, is you couldn't see the pupil to distinguish between. Okay. Uh, let's see, I feel like I'm getting getting paddiness that's looking like folds and pillows that would naturally emerge with a with a hand that goes in and out regularly. So yeah, you're not usually going to see the in the inside of his palm. Um, usually he's Usually he's walking with his hands like, like crutches. He's got these four itty bitty legs so he can kind of levitate around. But um, 
uh, for the most part, you're not seeing this. Uh, AJ Baki says, what kind of books do you write? I self-publish as well. That's right. You can always look up AJ Baki on Amazon to see her prolific list of wonderful works. Uh, Lily Lou says, dark fantasy, paranormal, some sci-fi. Got a lot of books out. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Lilu says, because of the lighting, it looks all black, and that's what makes it, the kid look a little creepy. Yeah, exactly. And the Nightbot says, the alias you set this command to be of Lynx does not exist. Grr, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Hey, Bjorn, are you still here? If you're still here, let me know, and uh, I'm going to have you, I'm going to have you, uh, because you were so helpful on your, your technical talk, the other day, I'm just going to bring up Nightbot and you show me what settings I have that are making it be dumb. Or anyone else who knows them. Okay, here we go. This is going to be exciting, folks. We're going we're gonna to fix this live. Spider spinnerets, yo. Okay, so here's Nightbot. And, uh, do, 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 do. so we've got, is it under commands? No, do, 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 do. where am I looking? Go to the, oh, this is the dashboard. Yorn says, looks like you've got a Nightbot timer set up with an improper alias. Yes, Lilu, that was a spider butt. Because uh, Scola can spin webbing out of his hands. He extrudes it, so that's why I was looking that up. But, and one of the reasons his hands look so disturbing. Okay, Bjorn says, find the thing you want to show up periodically in chat. Yes, so it is here. Uh exclamation point YouTube is that right no that's not right uh, under defaults commercial here we go okay so here's here's what I want running uh, no that's not right no it's it's links where's links command No, I made one. I wonder if it didn't say. Oh, you know what? I think this is set to um, set to my YouTube channel, not my Twitch. Is that possible? Eh, okay. I'll just have to research it more later. Sorry about that. I thought it would just be a quick setting thing. Never a quick. It's never a quick thing. AJ says, I might have forgotten to claim all my books. I think I forgot. Bjorn says, you may have to set it up only in the timer section without the command section to match. Check your timers. You need it both in commands and in timers. Uh, okay. Lulu says, that or Amazon is being derpy. Equally plausible. Uh, Drax John is popping over on YouTube. Hey, Drax John. Welcome, welcome. Sorry if you're feeling a little bit lonely over there. I've been encouraging people to uh, join me on my Twitch channel where I'm uh, streaming right now. The uh, I have to stop streaming on to YouTube in order to become a Twitch affiliate. So I'll still have these videos on my channel, but they're going to be pre-recorded. Okay, so when I back up a little bit, um, a problem that I'm seeing is that most of these lines are almost the same thickness. So it's starting to look more like, like a ball of yarn or a brain than like when you look at a hand, you can see like this part is bigger and then it tapers down. You know, this part's really big. So I want that variation of, of width in there. Drax John, that was fast. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Lilu says, my name is Chrissy Moss on there. There's a link on my Twitch page, too. Uh, I assume you're talking about, I, I think I missed it. I assume you're talking about your Amazon author page or something. Yeah. 
yeah, I definitely want to check that out. I'm I'm super interested in how other indie authors do their stuff because there's so much advice out there, and it it seems like half the indie authors make their living by selling advice to other indie authors rather than actually making much uh, <laughs> making any books. All their books are about how to be an indie author. Um, yeah, so I listened to a bunch of podcasts on it, on indie publishing and stuff, um, and writing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so here's a great example of where things narrow down a little bit on this little, this little Y shape, but then it's the same thickness here and here. So I'm gonna go and like pad this puppy up. Make it feel nice and nice and meaty, nice and pillowy. And then, so the hands are essentially symmetrical, but not quite. Like they're opposing. He has three opposing thumbs. So I think probably having an indication of or. Not an indication. Having subtle symmetry as opposed to like very straight up symmetry is a good way to do that. Damon, hey Damon. Thanks for stopping by. You've been uh, you've been very busy this summer. Keep uh, keep just doing the drive bys. But hey, I appreciate a uh, drive-by is better than never seeing you at all, so. Is it just work that has you so busy? It's the busiest time of year at a nursery, that's for sure. Or maybe it's, maybe it's starting to slow down. Maybe a month ago was the busiest time. I don't know. I don't, I don't nursery things. Being outside, unless I'm hiking, um, just feels like a waste of time to me. So all those walks are just... Yeah. I mean, I'd rather walk inside. <laughs> That's hiking. Walking, walking with you every day is hiking. It's just neighborhood hiking. I don't know. I feel like hiking is going up in elevation. Nah, that is not part of the definition. Uh, Lilu says, isn't that how all the self-help made money things go? Either they sell books on how to do it, or in the writing community they have conventions, speaking engagements, etc., etc. Some do make a living from just books, but most have multiple streams of income. Yes, that is what I hear from everyone all the time. I mean, just that's, that's how to be a creative, a creator in today's environment you know i've got the youtube i've got the twitch i've got the um, um what's called patreon um and none of those individually could ever make a difference but all together they're you know make enough of a difference to warrant me to continue to do this certainly uh, nowhere near paying the bills I'm never gonna quit my job and just do this full time. Although that'd be amazing, but um, but also my my regular job is amazing. I get to make video games for a living, so I don't have a huge incentive. You know, I'm not I'm not working at a at a hardware store or McDonald's or something and wishing I could do art all day. I already do art all day, so well, art and design. This is still better, but I feel like I need to merge more things. Merge these guys. Oh, AJ Baki says, wow, I went and looked at Amazon and I'd forgotten to claim about four of my books. <laughs> what, uh, what does that mean to claim your books? Like your your author title or uh, what do you mean uh, 
I have yet to publish one there, so I'm not sure. Lulu says, partly why I got my Twitch affiliate. Yep, yep, that's why I'm getting ready to do my affiliate nest ship. AJ Baki says, someday I want to make a living as an author. And then says, if I claim them, it adds them to my author page. Oh, that's weird that that's not, like, automatic. But okay. Uh, Lilu says, I think you are spending hundreds or more hours on this one piece that is supposed to be for a book cover than I have spent on any of my book covers. <laughs> you can't make money that way. Well, well, unless it gets lots of eyes on your eyes. Yeah, um, sure. I'm not... Hopefully, I'm not looking at ROI on this one piece as simply it, it's not just an asset for a book cover it's also going to be sculptures that I sell and posters and blah blah you know on and on and on and also just part of my world design is the viz, viz dev so I, I do the first stab at visual development of everything in my world from from costumes and creatures and uh you know the the world map etc etc so that's why i've been working on you know the world for 15 20 years depending on when you count um so yes yes i agree with you if this was simply a book cover this would be a ridiculous thing to do but it is not AJ Baki is saying, which of your books would you recommend to try first, Lilu? Is fitting into the whole the big picture. Pretty well. Once I continue this scale pattern down onto it, I think it will naturally blend in. Hey, Lilu, you can post a, a link to your author page or whatever you like. I'm pretty sure I fixed the settings on Nightbot, so you should be able to do that. Or whatever the settings were that keep people from doing links. I think you can link right on my thing. Uh, and then she says, uh, Witch's Sight or Dragon's Flame if you like fantasy. Forgotten Ones if you like urban fantasy. Lilu says, it's one of my latest book and some of my best work, I think. Uh, referring to Dragon's Flame. Excellent. Yeah, I'll definitely want to check that out. Uh, Lilu, have you done any any audio books? Aletha just had one of her books put to audio. Which reminds me, I still have not got that yet. I need to grab that. Because I'm about 90% more likely to actually uh, consume a book if it's in audio format. It's so, I mean, people say read when they mean listen. And there's nothing wrong with how language evolves based on technology, but I still like being precise. And so what is, the, what is the general word for consuming a piece of content that is a book uh, if, if for, that works for both uh, listening or reading? 
I don't know what that is besides consume, and that's a terrible, just such a weird, like, markety businessman way of saying that. AJ Baki says, awesome. We always get better and better with each new book. I think so long as we are still open to learning and improving. Lilu says, yep, I have been working on a lit RPG the last month, and it's gone really fast, and I love it. Aletha says, awesome, my hidden level series is lit RPG. Uh, Lilu says, I have some short stories on audiobook. The Prophecy by Barlight is really good. Okay, cool. Oh, I almost forgot. One of the weird little quirks I wanted to do was give his thumbnails. I wanted to make his thumbnails a little bit bifurcated so that he can grab really well with his nails. So there'll be a little a little notch in each of the thumbnails that allows the the pointy end of the fingernail to fit into the notch of the thumbnail because I want them to be very they're very handy people hey hun could you do me a favor no I have to make you turn my photo oh what could you get my backpack that's by the piano bench I wanted to show a picture of some of the stuff these guys make. Lulu says it's a bit funny. Audiobooks are still read. It's a the gray backpack. I read in that backpack. My sketchbook is in there. Here we go. I'm a sketchbook. So, in here, I made this by the way. It's, it's made out of brass. And it has a little, um, a little latch that my pencils and stuff go in. Uh, let's see. So anyway, one of the things these guys do with their little fingers and thumbs Is it on this page? There we go. So they make, they write books. Uh, here's one of, this is, this is Scola's girlfriend. She has a terrifying egg thing stuck on her through much of the book that they have to remove surgically. Uh, so this right here, let's see how close we can get this still. This is a book that Scola is the author of. And so their books work by perforating a scroll of paper that is on this little like film reel type device. So they, they spin the little knobs to, to progress the book. They read it that way. So they can, they can read um, in light or dark because it's actual perforations on paper, so it's kind of like Braille. Oh, Bjorn is recommending the word experience for imbibing a book, either audibly or visually. <laughs> Lilu says, uh, AJ, I think I've seen the Hidden Level book. I've been on an lit RPG kick lately. Cool, man. Uh, AJ Baki says, Full Elven did the covers for the Hidden Level series, too. And Bjorn says, Full Elven is so wonderful. Love, love. Yeah, Full Elven actually did my did my website for me. You should, you should see my awesome website. Well, this particular part of my website is not that impressive but yeah actually if you want to know anything more about my book series you can always go here and I've got this whole thing about like 
what the world is about, like what my goals are for writing the books. And then I also have, let's see, a sentient species list where you can go and if something looks cool, click on it and you get this whole like, here's, here's pictures of them, like all their, their stats, just world building stuff. And then like almost a D and D type sheet. And then you could leave a comment. Yeah. I love it when people leave comments. You could, you could be the first to leave a comment there. Anyway, yeah, Paul Elfin helped me uh, get, get this website together. Yay. Lilu says, oh, like a player piano. Yeah, very much like a player piano. That is what a spitter book is like. Trying to think of the best way to make this notch work. It's prob probably best to just mush it down quite a bit. That's way too creepy. Yeah, I don't want it to be quite. I don't want it to look like an earwig's butt. Uh, let's. If I use clay buildup, just needs to be an, enough of a notch to be a place to set the sharp bit of the fingernail. The nail itself, if it doesn't taper, I think that, that helps it too. Bjorn says, player pianos are their audio books. <laughs> yeah, back in oldie times. Uh, would it be better to give the one finger two claws that have a very limited articulation and, uh, and then have the opposing claw slot in. Uh, I think if I understand what you're saying, I think that's what I'm doing. So when a thumb and finger comes together, there we go. When a thumb and finger comes together this pointy part needs to fit into the slot of the bottom part. I love spitballing, Bjorn. I've actually um, made a lot of changes to my design as people have made suggestions. And I, I love collaboration. I think it's amazing. And I want that to be like one of the main uh, attractors to my, my platform. Uh, my book series and everything is just talking about ideas and learning from each other. That is just the coolest thing to me. I'm definitely not one of those artiste types that just thinks, well, it's my idea, therefore it must be the best. In fact, I'm pretty much the opposite. I think my idea is just like a first shot in the dark and almost anyone else will be able to add to it in better ways than I would, so. <laughs> uh, Aaron Hawaii says, oh hey, we met at Soba. Let's see, that was the Seattle Open Broadcasters something. Uh, let's see, Aaron, were you the, were you the chess streamer? No, that wasn't Aaron. Tell me more about yourself.
I met like 10 people there. Oh, you are the chess guy. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, sweet. Let me, let me add you as a friend real quick because I definitely want to check out your stream. Boom. Okay. Uh, Bjorn says, I keep needing to make it to the meetups, but haven't been able to swing it yet. Yeah, I just went to my first one uh, last weekend. And it was cool. Uh, I'm not a naturally outgoing, socially gregarious person. I'm very gregarious when you know me and we're just hanging out. But when I'm in a room full of new people I don't know, I tend to be a bit of a wallflower. So I just like force myself to like run up to people and say, hey, a oh, person, pay attention to me. And it's really awkward for everyone and I apologize, but um, it's, you know, we all do our best and that's my best. Aletha understands, she was homeschooled like, just like me. Bjorn, you're the same way. Yeah, it's funny how we can be so just like natural and at ease, like on a on a Twitch, but then in person it's just it's so much harder for some reason. AJ says, in person is scary. Yep. I mean, I don't, I don't think scary is the right word for me as much as it's like, I don't, I don't want to annoy people. Maybe that's a fear thing, but it's, it, to me, it's more like a polite thing. Like I just, I don't want to intrude in other people's lives without being asked <laughs> and maybe that maybe that's why being online is I can totally be myself it's because well you all opted in for this so I don't have to answer to you I can just be what I am that and one of my biggest uh, social failings is that I tend to jump directly to the uh, sarcastic jokey phase of a relationship, like immediately, hi, my name is Josh, and then say something utterly stupid and sarcastic. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, you know people don't know how to take that they're like are you are you making fun of me or and i think i think that's happened to me enough that i think that's where my discomfort with being in public is so i i have to i have to spend cognitive overhead to not do that which makes me less natural of a person you know Drax John says, I enjoy that part. I totally relate to trying to break it because I feel like it hinders me a lot. Uh, AJ Baki says, hmm, I guess next time I visit, if I feel like you are being too weird, I can just leave the house. <laughs> That's right. Just get up and walk out. That's fair. Oh, what happened to my musics? My musics went away. I'm on a track called Serenity. That's just too serene, apparently. So serene, it's literally silent. AJ Baki says, I love your sarcasm, Josh, even if it oca occasionally leaves me stumped. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So there's another problem I have is that my mom, being a sci-fi author, she raised me with an overly large vocabulary 
So I'm, it's actually like a social hindrance. Because I'm a Sesquipedalian, I say things like the word Sesquipedalian in a joke, and people don't know what I'm talking about and feel alienated and weird. And for the record, Sesquipedalian is someone who uses overly large words. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, because I'm like, what? Yeah. Overly large words inappropriately. Like, just to do it, you know. That's why it's my favorite word. <laughs> because it actually describes what I do mostly accidentally. <laughs> but it also matches exactly what it's... It is exactly what it sounds like it should be. I love words like that, just aesthetically. And it delights me. And yeah. then and then because I love irony, my second favorite word is a word that means the opposite of what it sounds like, which is pulchritude. I'm gonna let anyone guess what pulchritude means. Poker face? Nope. Close. You Very know, close. you should I don't know what those faces things were, but you guys were talking about is that like a button to like the emoticons. Okay, like, yeah. so you should do a cricket one so that if people are like, what the oh, hell is yeah. Josh talking about? <laughs> For bad they jokes. Can, they can hit a cricket. like. <laughs> that would be amazing, especially if it actually made a cricket sound <laughs> on the stream. <laughs> I'm sure you can set it up to do that. Drex Jan says, oh, I meant the word annoy before. My spelling isn't the best. Okay, now I've got to see what you're talking to. Let's see. I'm trying to break it because I feel like it hinders me a lot. All right, well, I can't find the last thing you said that uh, you meant annoy, but I'll take your word for it, Drax. AJ Baki says, I have no idea what that means, much less how to spell it. Ha ha. And the crickets would be hilarious. So pulchritude means full of beauty. In fact, you could just you could no you could describe a woman as pulchritudinous. No, oh, that's terrible. Far with the ladies. <laughs> yep. If you really want to impress the ladies, uh, <laughs> call her pulchritudinous. <laughs> All right, a hole. <laughs> Again. Also, if you could just get what's your face on Curb Your Enthusiasm, what he's calling Larry, you're like, <laughs> like yeah. it's hilarious. That would be good. Uh, Drax Jen says, annoy instead of enjoy. Oh, okay, you said you enjoy that part and you meant uh, annoy. I gotcha. I gotcha, yes. I don't like hurting people. I don't like hurting their feelings. I don't like making them confused and bewildered. And yet the vast majority of my humor ends up doing those things. And so unless I'm your good friend, I, it may, is it fear or is it simple politeness? It's just being nice. It's like, I know because you don't know me very well that the things I say are going to annoy or upset you. Therefore, keeping myself away from you is a favor to you. That's not wrong. Uh, I mean, ideally, what I would do is I would just not joke like that, right? That's the, that's the ideal world where I'm capable of that. But it's like slouching. Unless I'm constantly thinking about it, it's just going to happen. <sighs> Well, I think also, though, you just have to remember that if somebody says something and you're like, what in the world? Are they being jerks? Whatever. Like, test it against even what little bit of character that you know yeah. of them to have. And just be like, oh. And just ask. All you have to do is ask for clarification. Yeah. But assuming that somebody meant it in a rude way, well, that kind of makes that person a dick. Like... Yeah. Like you sh jumping, we all jump to these weird conclusions about people. That's like, well, that just seems so unlike them. Well, yeah. Probably so go it ask. Is not them. Yeah. Like maybe you're just not getting it because you know. Agreed. I mean, you make jokes like with bigger words, so I don't really know what you're talking about sometimes, but you know. 
that you can like, always ask. Or both you and I, like, if we're just in normal space off face or looking, we just look grumpy all the time. And people are, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then RBI. jokes don't carry well sometimes, maybe. You forget to do the 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 smile though afterwards to be like that's a joke. Right? Yeah, see that's actually you don't so follow it through with. It's the, not that like, I forget. Jk it, smile. Right, I can't say just kidding, or do the wink, or do the smile, or do any it of that stuff to be because big. to me that ruins the joke. It makes it not funny anymore. That's why you look at the person and see. Are they not getting it? And just go like... Right. Huh. Yeah. It was a joke. It's a bad joke. Don't worry about it. Exactly. Just say, if I was better to re able to read people or... I don't know what it... Yeah. No, you're right. It's because it's not my desire at all to hurt people. And I should... Like, I need to learn to sacrifice what I think is funny for being nice. Like, yeah not being able to sacrifice a joke for being nice is just an indication that I'm a mean person. I think more, I need to of change it, that. more of it is you're not you're not looking for the body language afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if you're not looking for it, you don't know how they're responding. And so you can't clarify in that moment. And that's what mm -hmm. because it's not about people like being tested on their sense of humor. You know what I mean? Like they like being tested on their sensitivity? Yeah, tested, like stretched, like, oh. Because, you know, like somebody who doesn't understand puns, and you start giving it to them, and then they start to expect it, and they're like, oh yeah, okay, that was funny. Like, they start seeing it differently. Mm. Because they never really notice puns, or... Okay. I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but... I, it, it's fun to it, see it's a... unexpected. Right. right. So relationships with other humans is about aligning expectations. It seems a, a lot of that, like you can enjoy being around a person when you understand them, know what to expect. And so you're on that wavelength with, with them. You're not, you're not worried that you're going to be attacked or mistreated or bullied or whatever. Right. It's just like you're comfortable around them because you know if they say something that's weird and, and off-putting and throws you off, it's probably a misunderstanding as opposed to actually them being awful to you. Mm -hmm. Dottie B says, I just started a new job and I'm still in that awkward fitting in stage. Oh man. Yeah, yeah that's, that's so why I haven't, that's why I, I've never quit a job. <laughs> well, uh, sorry. I quit Jack in the Box, <laughs> and I quit McDonald's, and I quit newspaper delivery. I've never quit a, a game, you know, my career. I've worked at five or six places, depending on how you count it, um, and every single one, it was either a contract that came up, or they closed the studio, or they closed my department. Uh, so, so that's why I've been at ArenaNet for 14 years. I just, I don't want to be in that awkward fitting in stage again. Although ironically, since it's, ArenaNet has grown so much since I started there, I was employee number 32. So really, I'm always in that awkward fitting in stage because there's constantly new people I'm having to meet and get to know and, you know, go through that process with. So it, I guess it's not really... Although it's not the same because I know the general culture of the studio. I'm not worried about doing some studio-wide faux pas that will get me fired or something. But yeah, it's, just, it's not a fun stage unless you're someone like Heather who just like is utterly fascinated by getting to know new people and loves new people. Well, okay, so on what day was that? Was that Thursday? Thursday. Um, I I was invited to by my neurologist. So the the NIH is the National Institute of Healthcare of our country. Or oh, hold on, Linda just came on. Hi, Linda. And Aletha says that um, new jobs in fitting can be difficult, and she has resting sad face, and puns are good for the soul. 
<laughs> and then Dottie B says, my last job was phased out and I got laid off, so I was forced to find a new job. Oh, yeah. that stinks. Okay, so back to your story. You were... Well, I was going to say that, you know, so the NIH commissioned my uh, headache specialist slash neurologist uh, to make new training modules that will be shown across the U.S. for... Um, providers, healthcare, neurologists, whatever, it's to, to do new training and it's about the overuse of medication and how it actually, um, it's interesting how it plays a role in making more migraines, but people never really have ever explained why it does it. They just say, oh, well, it's rebound. Well, it rebound just, nah. there's a negative thing because basically if you're a migraine sufferer and somebody says, oh, well, you're just doing it because you have rebound. Well, then the only option is, well, then you just have to stop. And that's not stop what stop whatever that medication, medication. is. Okay. And that's scary. And that's but that's as far as the advice has ever gone. In general, you just have to stop. Hmm. There's nothing else that helps you, but too bad, so sad. Right. So, anyways, my point is, we're making these training modules. So I was like, I dressed up, you know, nice, and I was like, okay, be mature, be mature, be mature. <laughs> Don't say like all the time. Like, 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 like. Don't do that. But be mature, like, check your posture. <laughs> like. Just, yes, like, exactly. It's, <laughs> I can't help it. And, um, but anyways, I just was going through nonstop these reminders. And, um, oh yeah, by the way, I was asked to be a part of that. I don't even think I said that. No, you didn't miss up. I so. have a headache, speaking of which, because yes. it's 3 o'clock and normally I take meds. So like, you were asked to. to be on video yeah, talking about Yeah, so my neurologist asked me to come and be filmed to first tell my story, but also to help um, with the training modules. And uh, so I went, and she had... One of her neurologists who, who are going through our certification program, pretty soon our state will have four headache specialists, but right now we only have two. So one of the girls is um, about to be certified for a headache specialist, because neurologists are not also equal to headache specialists. Um, and then also, um, it was like my neurologist assistant who's been there for years and stuff. But so, I, there's, there is a camera guy, there's two, there's just a, a two-man crew who are filming and doing the sound and all that stuff, and I would, I just, it was hard to tell, like, because everyone was so professional, so professional, and then there's me, like, stop, 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 don't do that, stop, stop, you know, over and over, don't do that, don't be weird, don't, no, don't do that, they don't want to be silly, because then you just look less qualified, or whatever, you know, but, after lunch, or during lunch break, I was making just ridiculous jokes, um, making songs up, and so I really just kind of let my true ridor ridorculous, see? Ridorculous? Yeah. That's a new Ridiculous one. dorkiness that. shine through, and... I was going to call it adorkable, but... No, it was pretty ridiculous. Okay. But, you know, changing Spice Girls songs up and making it, like, about migraines and stuff, and whatever, so they saw, they kind of saw like, oh wow, Heather's <laughs> kind of weird. But um, then we started back getting ready to film and we were running through what this module is going to be about. And I got like super exagger, how do you say exagger, exaggeratory? Exaggerational? What were you exaggerating? I don't know, everything. Just <laughs> being... Like, I had a headache this big, and uh, then they shoved this thing up my nose that was this big, and, you know, but they all started laughing. I was like, don't worry, I won't be silly. They're like, no, no, no be silly, and I'm like, what? I could have been silly this whole time. <laughs> so I wasted, like, half of that day not being, not silly. being silly and, you know, trying to s just squash all those impulses, and then that's what they like. Now... If the NIH wants to keep that module, <laughs> I mean, probably since they See paid it for it, but it's, you know, it wasn't completely unprofessional, but I mean, 
if you were to watch it, everyone's just like, hi, what brings you in today? I have headaches. Oh, really? I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm, I couldn't watch this. I mean, honestly, the, <laughs> the health card to get your food handler's permit on the, like those modules that we have for our state. Goodness. So speaking of which, I can make one of those videos. I would have so much fun doing the food handler's permit. It would. Module. Oh my gosh. Have fun it could be pretty like much a one video. Show. I could yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Linda says hi to Josh and Heather. Hello. 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 So all of that said is, you know, sometimes we we squash it and then it turns out it could have been exactly what the doctor ordered. No, what the, you know, what would have been really fun for everyone. So I think it's even better to learn to watch people after you deliver your good or bad jokes mm -hmm. and learn how to do their feedback and then just ask like, oh, did you know this joke? And you can wait a little bit, let the joke land. Mm. But then, you know, wait a few seconds if you're not sure. Yeah, I think for uh, the more the more uh, social you are, the more that is just natural. So it doesn't take any cognitive overhead to do that. No, it does. Well, you say that. How do you know? Because I've had to work. I've had to do. I've had, I like, if Starbucks has not taught me anything except that mm -hmm. always go back if you're not sure and ask them about it because mm -hmm. that place is filled with people who don't get who don't anything get like <laughs> oh my gosh okay okay fair enough fair enough. i wasn't always a people person either as in what people consider me now like that also had to develop be, yeah mm -hmm. i mean i'm a people person but i mean starbucks is different like when there's like thousands of strangers all the time that's not quite the people person you know what i mean that's just like it's so un it's so much people mm -hmm. so i mean dealing with large numbers of people in quick succession is certainly different than the one-on-one -on -one, you know meeting new people sort of situation. yeah or you're like went to a friend that had a few people over right I think I like how big and pillowy the knuckles on the thumbs are, so I'm going to also do that on the fingers. Dottie B says, time for me to go. Thanks, Josh and Heather, for the stream. Bye. You're welcome, Dottie. And 
have a good one. Say hi to your mom, as usual. Always tempted to do this this thing where when you have a raised ridge you want to go in and like add these little like places where the skin is being pulled tight sort of look like you, you see that a lot in creature design um, and you know it exists in nature in some places but uh, for this particular piece I don't think it works because he's going to be having you know these uh, all of these all of the there we go all of these scales all over it and it doesn't and all the all the reference that I was looking at earlier there's just no real precedent for that not that I have to be married to the reference, since it is, um, you know, this guy is an alien. He's not literally a reptile. But reptile is the category that a brain, a human brain looking at this is going to file him under. And so the more things that look similar but wrong about, you know, about a, uh, a reptile are going to... cost. I need to develop this theory more. I haven't heard it before. I'm sure it exists, but this this idea that there's a there's a slider between um on the one hand a completely alienating design where people look at it and are just like I don't know what that is and as a result I don't care. Um and then on the other side, I know exactly what that is it's a puppy and I love it right and so most things are most creature design lives somewhere between that spectrum um, and there are specific decisions you make as you're designing that will nudge you one way or the other and so being aware of how those decisions are pushing you one way or the other is part of the skill and craft of being a creature designer and because you can be an amazing creature designer and make a completely alienating design that everyone hates on purpose that's usually what you know a lot of horror uh, monster design is um, and you can be in a a terrible creature designer and just make something that looks exactly like a puppy and everyone loves it and but you you weren't you didn't know that's what you were doing you were just making something that you thought was cute you know what I mean so being conscious about your decisions is is the exciting innovation that I'm trying to bring into my own uh, creature design uh, because for most of my artistic life, the goal has always been make something that looks cool to me. And I just wasn't thinking about, wasn't considering that, that spectrum, how it's moving along the spectrum based on the decisions I'm making. So.
And so, uh, like I've said before, with Scola, I want him to be somewhere in the middle, where he's where he's recognizable as as a creature that you could conceive of that has you know evolved on some planet somewhere, uh, according to the laws of physics. Um, that he's when you look at him, you're not instantly repulsed because he's not a monster in the story he's not chasing you know people down and eating them um and he's got a very interesting personality and character uh, that i want to try to you know his visual design should match his character design uh you don't always want that in stories. Sometimes you want the opposite, and that's sometimes interesting. But in this case, um, yeah. So, so I want him to be a little bit off-putting, but also something about him is cute, and you can't quite put your finger on it. But he's he's just fun to look at. Um, but then other times, like he'll do something, or you'll see him at a certain angle or in certain lighting. Or you'll see the bottom of his hands and be like, "Ugh, gross." Uh, so yeah, those are those are my goals for him. And so being aware of how my decisions are pushing forward or back, and visualizing those decisions as an economy, where it's like, AJ Baki says, "I love school." Me too. Uh, envisioning the um, there's an economy, and, and every choice you make is either buying uh, tokens that put you towards the the recognizable, likable, um, or towards the alienating, disturbing side of the spectrum. Uh, I don't think that's how I was using my economy metaphor earlier, and now I'm trying to remember how I was using it, though was saying because specifically I was talking about how doing the um, was I talking about the sphincter and the spinnerets or something um, the more the more recognizable attributes you give it oh I was just talking about readability grokability understandability so I need to be a good word for that um, when people look at a creature, do they understand what they're looking at? That's the economy thing I was talking about. The more alien things you put on a thing... Let me give you a great example of this. So... Uh, Wayne Barlow... Aliens. So this guy makes very alieny aliens that like what it, what is going on here i mean i see legs there's a tail that seems to be a back but there's like a weird texture and lighting it's like what is going on here or is it is it looking at other ones that there's answers to all of these questions and there's a whole incredible book um about these creatures and their designs and his goal was to make truly alien aliens and alien aliens are off-putting <laughs> just like um yeah these ones are probably a little more grokable than others um but yeah the more like weird textures and shapes and like limbs in different proportions and angles than we're used to all of these things you're paying a price uh, a grokability price and fewer people are going to be able to understand what they're looking at and as a result fewer people are going to care what they're looking at so that i think is when I'm talking about an, an economy here, you know, Wayne Barlow here is very happily cashing in all his chips for 
let's let's think really hard about what actual alien anatomy could be like and why it wouldn't be anything like what we expect or what we're used to. Um, and that's not the goal in my fictional universe. Uh, I'm really excited by the idea of making everything scientifically plausible, but it is plausible as far as we know uh, that things, you know, sentient creatures evolving on other planets would share a lot of common things with life on Earth. Like I was talking about mechanics, you know, like there's only so many ways a tendon or bones and joints and that kind of stuff can work mechanically because of physics. So there are certain expectations that you can, you can import onto your creature. And when people look at your creature, they're going to uh, recognize and understand what, what they're looking at, even if the forms are different proportions, shapes, colors, textures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's, there's a pleasing amount of that. And then once you go too far, it becomes unpleasing. This hand taken in isolation is towards the Wayne Barlow end of the spectrum. <laughs> it's very alien and disturbing. Like you would not want to wake up to having that in front of your face. But when you contextualize it with the whole creature, uh, I think, um, especially from the angles that you're usually going to see it, it's clear enough that these are fingers on a hand, on an arm that connect at the shoulder, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Sorry, I'm now repeating what we kind of started the stream with. Drex John, thanks for stopping by. Uh, he said, one of my sketches looked like an itzel. I'm not sure what an itzel is. Or what sketch he's talking about. Now I'm curious. Let's see what an itzel is, shall we? Oh, <laughs> you mean the frog creatures from the video game I work on. Sorry, I was... Different headspace, yeah. I love those guys. For some reason, it's so close, I think, to um, the like Quetz Quetzalcoatl and other South American uh, myths. I, in, that's in, in my head what I was expecting. But it makes sense because uh, most of their mythos in uh, Guild Wars 2, the, the frog guys, is, is uh, in, heavily inspired by South American stuff. Yeah, Letha, I'm putting together the um, kind of a playlist for our massive road trip. Well, I'll see if I can throw your audiobook on that list. I've got a ton of podcasts, several several audiobooks, a little, little bit of music now and then, depending on the mood. But I mean, we're going to be driving for two weeks probably at least half that time spent in the car, so we'll have plenty of time. Well, and also for the record, my frog creature that I drew was before Heart of Thorns came out and the Itzels were a thing. I'm the first person who ever invented the frog person. 
No, not really. It was just a drawing I did for my mom for her birthday many years ago. She really likes frogs. All right. I'm just trying to decide how much of this this folded wrinkledness should be projected down on the hand. I mean, the weight of the skin should be pushing on it, so there should be some amount of uh, displacement happening there. So I'll just start subtle and build up as needed. Yeah, the reason I did all these strokes like this instead of one one big stroke like this uh, is because it kind of gives me some natural starting points for building in these little um, it, what are these just organic creases find like the more the more kind of random your strokes get the more my brain can pick out areas that it looks it just looks right that the that the skin would kind of compress and fold in certain ways and then but not consistently like I want this area to not have as much of a as much of a roll because the skin is being displaced kind of downward along the side. It just happens to be getting pulled that way, you know, that's...
think, I think the uh, feet are, no, let's look at the feet. It might be close enough to the same standard. They've got four-way symmetry on, which is cool. Uh, let's see, their little toes are... Um, I don't think I... I think I want their toes to all be bisected, like his thumbs are. It just makes more sense for distributing weight. Like, it doesn't make sense to have all your weight coming down on teeny tiny little sharp bits. That's just asking for things to get broken. So. Let's see, what is the resolution set up? 500. Bump that up a bit. Oh, actually, back to low resolution. I can smooth them down better when they're low resolution than high. Resolution. Let's see if I do. Giving them little horseshoes.
Alexander Wirt coming on over on the YouTubes. Uh, I'm quite mythical and legendary. Yes, absolutely. I'll agree with all of that. I don't know about the man part per se, but myth and legend, yes. Alexander, as a part of an ongoing effort today, I'm encouraging everyone to pop over to Twitch. If you have a Twitch account, um, I'm Josh underscore Foreman over on Twitch. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is um, because I can no longer do live streaming on YouTube due to contractual reasons if I'm going to be on Twitch. And uh, things are better over there on Twitch. I will still be uploading all of my uh, my streams that I do on Twitch onto YouTube, but they won't be live anymore. So if you want to still be part of the party time, uh, got to get on onto Twitch. It's what all the cool kids are doing, all of them. I don't know if these did what I wanted them to do. Let's see. Yeah, I think they just need to be smoothed. Yeah. Sweet man, thanks Alexander. Yeah, feels feels like you can tiptoe around a lot better on these than what he had before. Probably still thicken them up a bit more.
once I have these hands and feet done, I'm gonna be like 90% of the way done with this sculpture. That's exciting. I can't even stretch my leg. I'm really can't straighten your leg at all? <laughs> not trying to stretch it like it hurts it's so tight from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you're doing a lot of crazy physical gymnastics, weren't you? Gardening. Sticking out a little too aggressively. I keep wanting to go in and detail the nails, but I can't. Can't really do that until I make it higher res, and I don't want to make it higher res until I'm putting the scales on. So I'll probably be doing the scales and nails next time. Just kind of giving, giving a general gesture of nailishness in the meantime. Okay, and then this little guy, let's do what we did on the hand and give him some spinneret uh, nubbinses. I mean, I don't, I don't think you'll ever see these, but it's good to have them. hand is still cut off until I until I get the uh, the scales on and then I'll move that other one up there I need it down there right now so I can still use symmetry on it but yeah I think we're moving and grooving pretty well I probably I still need to do some touch-up work around the, the nail beds of his uh, quills, but um, it's pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, okay. I think that's a good place to call it for today. Uh, yeah, this has been good. And man, thanks so much again for raiding my stream, if that's what that was. Thanks to Bjorn and Lilu for doing that uh well lilu's channel specifically right but i feel like i feel like bjorn is a big networking type who's like hey let's do this thing let's do that thing he's uh he's out there and doing a lot of things uh lilu if it was all your idea let me know so i can stop giving him any credit ever and uh yeah so this is this has been great Thanks again, guys. Uh, just as a reminder for anyone who hasn't seen, uh, I do have I do have this amazing website that's got 
uh, pictures of stuff and things and uh, and and just so much stuff just so much stuff and I'm looking for comments on all of it and feedback on all my design and art I love that kind of stuff so yeah we'll uh, see you on Wednesday if not sooner so um, have a great rest of your weekend unless you're in Europe and Australia in which case have a great week all right bye guys